First, thank you for inviting us to Denmark. You're um, welcome. Introduce yourself to our viewers. Oh, uh, yeah, this is uh, Rido and Scansonic. It's a part of a company called Dantax, and Dantax is actually a very old speaker manufacturer from Denmark. It's been there for 30, 40 years, something like that. Yeah. It used to be one of the three big ones in Denmark. We had Jamo, we had Eltax, we had, uh, uh, well, and then Dantax. And then, then of course there was... Scanspeak. Scansp but Span Scanspeak is a driver manufacturer. It was yeah. not a finished product. True. But Dantax here stopped making export speakers late 80s, early 90s, something like that, and resorted more to selling import goods from China. And then six years ago, uh, when the financial crisis was at its highest, yeah. uh, our financial partner in Rido got financial problems and Dantax took over the shares and thus moved everything here, production and everything of the Rido speakers here. So you could continue with Rido? So we could continue with Rido and, and then to three years ago, we sort of started on making the line of Scansonic speakers as well. Yeah. Scansonic is the finished speaker from Scanspeak because Dantax also owned the uh, Scanspeak driver manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, because the names are very similar. I mean, you got Scansonic and you got Scanspeak. Yeah, the, the Scanspeak was a raw drivers and Scansonic was a uh, complete speaker systems. Yeah. Okay. And they only sold the driver manufacturer and the raw driver to VIFA. Ah, oh, yeah, VIFA, of course. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, so when that was sold off, mm -hmm. Dantax kept the name of Scansonic, and we then, three years ago, started to develop a line of speakers yeah. in the Scansonic brand. You now produce the Scansonic speakers, and the philosophy of Rado, Rado will be in the Scansonic. Yeah. Uh, products. Yes, what we did is that, that we took everything we know yeah. and said, okay, we cannot make everything to the higher standard. We right. have no, there has to be a sort of a limitation. So we have to find out where to compromise, where did we sacrifice the least yeah. by going into components that are more affordable. Okay, can you name one? I mean, unit wise. Well, yeah, but what we did, what we do with uh, Rido is that we built everything in house. Mm -hmm. So if I want to have a tweeter membrane, yeah. I make a tweeter membrane, I seek out the supplier, I don't even ask for the cost. No. We just do the best thing we can do. We have the thinnest, lightest membrane absolutely possible. Yeah. The weight is 0 0.02 grams. Uh, it's very, very light. It's 11 microns thick. Yeah. And that material is very hard and very delicate to handle and cannot be mass produced. No. So in order to have something more mass producible, we cannot use the same membrane material. We need to alter that to something thicker, more resilient, more easy to work with. Yeah. And because we do that, we double the weight of the membrane. It's still light, yeah. but it's not as optimized. It's not that same refinement that, that refined, and it's, it's the same everywhere. Now how we, would you hear that in, in a speaker? I, I think that it, everything has a signature. Yeah. And if we go to a tweeter, every mass, every slight weight of that provides a part of the sonic signature. Yeah. Uh, the lower mass, you have nowhere to store any energy, and because of that, you cannot have any mass related signatures coming from that. So I think everything in making speakers is about targeting lowest possible noise. Yeah. And noise can develop a thousand places in a speaker. You have dynamic onlinearity, you have inductance in a voice coil. Mm -hmm. When the speaker driver is moving, uh, the inductance change in the coil and that generates its own signal. That sort of blurs what comes out of it. Yeah. You have uh, membranes not being stiff or rigid, but actually creating their own noise. You have uh, non-linearities in the surrounds, you have non-linearities in the spider, all, all making the movement of the cone uh, different than the signal you put yeah. in. And all these things together is a sort of like the signal to noise ratio. And that is what differentiates good speakers from bad speakers. 
that's what differentiates good headphones from bad headphones. Could I say that your quest with Rido and Scansonic is to get the lowest noise as possible in a speaker at a certain price point? Of course. Yes, of course. It's 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 always when you do compromise, it's, you yeah. pay a price, and and most often the price you pay is is a higher noise and yeah. lower uh, dynamic range. But the you can choose in, in which part of the speaker uh, you can sacrifice or not. Of course. And what, what would you define as the most important part of a speaker? The drivers are for sure. Uh, yeah. it's, it's like a car. If you have a bad engine, you won't get any. You will not win a Formula Race one with a no. Honda engine for the moment. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I mean, it's seriously the refinement and the detailing of the driver is what sets the signature of the speaker. Yeah. So the, that's why you always produce the best possible unit at a certain price point. Yes, speaker. but but the problem with doing a, a product like Scansonic that re yeah. retails from uh, quite quite affordable. Yeah. Um, so 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 I could make a driver that will cost as much as the full speaker does itself. So <laughs> of course of course there are uh, choices you need. Yeah. And and being a manufacturer in Denmark, some of the obvious choices is to outsource some of the assembly work. Yeah. So for the Scansonic, we have uh, drivers not made in house, no. but we have a, a sub supplier. Uh, building the drivers for us, so the labor work in, in, in supplying that to us is, is at a low low cost area. Sure. Same goes with the tweeters. So we have outsourced the assembly work on that. Yeah. And that gives us a, a driver that we have designed or drivers that we have designed in-house at a reasonable price point. Okay. But again, we cannot do the things that we do in-house because we have to rely on somebody else's technology. So it's not possible to refine things as much yeah. with the Scansonic things. But you did develop the, you developed everything, but uh, you gave us a tour uh, through the factory and uh, I was standing near the uh, cabinet and you did something special inside, which I've never seen before. It, yes. it has to do something with the, the airflow in, in the cabinet. Yes, I, I think that, uh, that there's a lot of, lot of ideas around cabinets. Yeah. But if you don't know how the airflow f is behind your driver. It doesn't matter. You can make an open cabinet, you can make a closed cabinet, you can make a vented cabinet. But when you have resonances in play, they will always set a signature to the speaker. Yeah. And when you have a closed cabinet, uh, it, it's ba basically a spring. Uh, it's a spring of the driver added to the spring of the cabinet. Yeah. But controlling the way the air moves inside the cabinet gives you an option of adding a damper to that equation. So your your moving system is no longer just springs no. with a defined resonance, but you actually have a damper in there. And that means that you can make a system that is close to critically damped. Uh, and, and, and the good thing about doing that is that where you get the most benefit as is at lot very high SPLs, but that's also where your driver needs the most of the damping. Mm -hmm. So so it's a system that works with the dynamics of the music, yeah. but does not uh, suffocate the driver when playing at low levels. And I think that's important that you have a speaker that can perform both when you are just having background music and you still have all the details and all the dynamics intact. Yeah, I noticed and, that even with the bigger systems, it's very, very detailed in the low end. Yes. yes uh, and it's easy to drive because you mentioned also that the impedance curve is, is pretty flat. One benefit of having a, a flow vent system inside the cabinet is that when you have no uh, system resonances, you don't get any uh, big resonance impedance peak. No. Uh, and, and that means that you don't have any phase shifts around the base region of your speaker and you get less much much less back EMF into your amplifier yeah. so it gives your amplifier a much easier job to work with yeah. and that will give you better control and better dynamics. More control more dynamics it's uh, now I was wondering I mean did, 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 when you're working on a, on a Scansonic do you feel as, as much as enthusiasm as working on a radio? I, I think that the, the job is different yeah. Uh, of course, it's 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 nice to build uh, build the best you can. Yeah. But it's also uh, it, 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 in a way when you know where you want to go, it's 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 an easier path. Making something uh, at a price point is more challenging because you have to juggle 
and decide what compromises to take and what not yeah. to take. Yeah. So, so the challenge is different, but for me it's just as exciting. Because basically making these products has for me never been about making money. It has never been about, uh, but it's, it's about making something that makes other people happy, really. Yeah. And I think music is in every person. And I think that, that, that now more than ever we need music in our lives. We yeah. need the joy and the happiness and the emotion of that. I, I mean that people that are subjected to that enjoy that. Mm -hmm. they, they get quality out of life. So for me it's not a job of, 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 of necessarily creating the best of the best of the best all the time. It's also to bring out something in, in a more affordable uh, price range where, yeah. where, where you can have bring the joy to, to more people actually. You know, affordable systems uh, that perform well for everyone. That's, that's a good a good goal. Eh? And uh, in, in a way I think that we as a business have been too focused on developing something almost as good, uh, just cheaper for so many years. And I mm -hmm. think, think that in every price segment you need to challenge the borders. You need not... we. Uh, uh, building amplifiers also it's, it's we don't we have been 20 or 30 years building the same speaker or building the same amplifier i think we need to push the barrier yeah. and we need to look at things in a, in, a, in a very different manner in order to get better results so what what would your next goal be um, push, you, you were talking about pushing the barriers do you think there's a lot of uh, there's there's so so much uncharted territory there's so much things that we don't really know what goes on and there's so many things we cannot measure like uh, like like uh, when 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 we use a, a, an analyzer on our speakers yeah. we see a frequency response uh, but that is a result of a lot of mathematics that's a, a result of the gating and for time window and we don't know the timing of what we are measuring uh, measuring yeah. we don't know the phase content of every frequency that we are measuring, and I think knowledge about that will make it, make it possible to make even better speakers than what we do today. There's still noise issues inside drivers that needs to be looked at. There's impedance issues. There's uh, there's uh, inductance in voice cords, which for me is a major player in 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 having poor performance in a driver. Yeah. Yeah. These things are are. are um, Every, every time we build a new driver, we learn things. We learn things from building a Scansonic driver that we can use in a rider driver. We learn things in a rider driver that we can later on implement in Scansonic drivers. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's a very uh, rewarding mental process of developing uh, drivers at, at any price point yeah. because it's, it's, it's a hybrid of, of something electric. It's a, something ma magnetic, it's something uh, mechanical. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of disciplines involved, and 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 to find exactly the right balance between things is is uh, it, it's 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 not it's not something that you just do. It's 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 something that uh, requires experience. It's something that requires uh, uh, knowledge and and also uh, creativity in order to see how can we make voice calls different. How can we make them uh, have the same force but with lower inductance. Mm -hmm. How can we make them have less hysteresis? What materials to use and why to use them? Yeah, because you use titanium in your more expensive drivers. We use titanium also in the Scansonic drivers. Okay. And we use the titanium. Not not. Uh, it's not the best material in terms of reliability. In terms mm -hmm. of uh, how much power can a speaker handle? But when you have felt how much hysteresis stamping does for an aluminium voice coil, yeah. you know that is not. The recipe, because, no. because the faster the transient, the more damping you yeah. have, and and it's it's, it's like a dynamic brake. The yeah. more the cone wants to accelerate from the current in the voice coil, the more the aluminium hysteresis holds us back. So it's it's actually uh, counter to what you want yeah. to achieve. Exactly. Uh, the problem with titanium is that you need to apply the damping someplace else, and this mm -hmm. is what we do with the with the with the airflow inside the cabinets. There's one thing, uh, and uh, I, I want to ask. And I mean, Alpha Audio is all about streaming, and you are playing on a CD player. 
Yes. <laughs> but first of all, it I don't sounds great. <laughs> first of all, I don't think we are done with the CD format yet. I not think yet. there are so many things, so many layers of information that is not really coming through uh, through most of the systems out there. And I think until we are done with that, we we have no need of going into streaming. I I, I think that streaming will definitely be. Uh, this is how I have my own music, and yeah. it's very convenient. It's just, but for doing demos, I don't think streaming. Or, or we need to discipline ourselves. I don't know what it is, but but the thing is that you very easily become nerdy in a corner with your streaming, and you have no contact with the people coming into your room. Yeah, that's true. And 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 it's it's everybody cannot look at the screen, but everybody can look at the CD. Yeah. And it's much easier to pretend something when you have. The album or the album cover or, or, or physical, physical thing. Sort of a social uh, thing. Yes. Yeah. And I think we need to be very careful that we don't let that part of our hobby go. And I actually see see vinyl is coming back. Yeah. And and one reason vinyl is coming back is that sense of ownership. Yeah. But 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 the funny thing is I have a big vinyl collection and sometimes I put on. I knew I find the, now I play this artist and yeah. I'll play that artist and all of a sudden there's a scratch but the funny thing is that every time I hear that scratch I know exactly where it came from <laughs> I remember the party I remember the people yeah. I remember so this this building a collection over a lifetime is taken away from the people when when we put everything in digital files and put them in albums and we lose we lose a little bit of ourselves and a little bit of our history by not accepting or not uh, cherishing this part of having a history with your music. Mm -hmm. And I think also there are so many CDs out there that th those are still the main source for most people for music. And I yeah. think they will be that. And I think the CDs will get the same kind of revival that we see vinyl has. Yeah. Because it's still a physical media and, and streaming is not. And I think we should not underestimate the power of owning something physical. No, no, no. And, and uh, one thing that really scares me about the digital media things is that it's so easy to make it downloadable. Yeah. It's so easy to, and that will take people out of the shops. And when people are got taken out of the shops, they don't get the hints and the pointers, and they don't get exposed to new music that they did in the record shop when they have somebody playing the last album from this or the newest no. album from that. They don't expo get exposed the same way. So that inspiration, that also the dialogue that they have with their uh, music pusher says, have you heard this new band coming yeah. up? Let me just play you a piece. That part is sort of disappearing and and you rely on yeah. your your own curiosity to search out and i know that some of the streaming services have you when you play this you may also be interested yeah in exactly that. you can so give it course, other algorithms for so, that. so of course it's 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 there but but really to take people out and expose them to something completely new completely different because you have an a knowledge of your customers when you are selling or or, yeah. uh, and you know that this guy that buys most of the classic, maybe he likes this part of rock music as well. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. And I think that that that, that is uh, that is not good. And I think also it's not good that people are not visiting the audio shops anymore, mm -hmm. so they could have a, a, a taste of uh, a new tweak, or a new thing, or a new cartridge, or a new something. And I think those things, those interactions, is part of what keeps a hobby going and rolling. And it, it, it's not interesting to play music if you cannot share it. It's not interesting to music if you cannot invite your friends to listen. No. So no I, I totally agree with so, that. So, so, the ownership so that's, and the sharing, yeah. that's, that's an important part. It's, uh, it's something that, that we'll have to find a way to do, even with streaming. Yes, of course. Uh, or, but or, or it will be hybrid. Yeah, there's no doubt that, that, that streaming has a role. Yeah. There's no doubt uh, because you can easily access a lot of things and there's no doubt that better formats also has a, a, a place in the future. Mm. For me there's a lot of obstacles that we need to pass <laughs> first because I still think that the speakers are the worst part we have. To get back to speakers, uh, I'm always interested in, uh, in the philosophy behind a, a company. What, what's driving you? Why do you build speakers? Well, you told that you want to to bring music to people, and I think that's a beautiful thing. I I, 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 I make speakers because I cannot help it. Yeah. Uh, when 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 Scanspeak was sold to Viva, 
Yeah. That was just around the time there was a fire in the Scanspeak factory. It burned down completely, almost. But the the fun part, or the interesting part, and this is where everything sort of goes in a circle, is that yeah. there was some part of the warehouse that did not burn, and there were some drivers that did not get damaged or wrecked or fully. Yeah. But my father was a teacher at a school, and they had sort of like a apprentice going there that was studying teaching and and he was neighbor to this factory burning so from the insurance company he and my father bought a lot of drivers so when when I was around 10 11 years old yeah. they were building speakers from these drivers and selling them and that meant and when I grew up I always had a cabinet with scan speak drivers to just ah. open and pick and when I went to to high school through high school, there was not a month or a week I didn't do any. I, I made speaker projects, <laughs> just for the fun of it. <laughs> That's cool. So, so, so making speakers yeah. and understanding speakers it's really is in your blood. It, it is really uh, from from long time ago. Well, thank you for all your time and the tour around the factory. You're uh, welcome. Uh, I'll put the pictures on the website, of course. It's, in, it's hard to do in a video, but. Uh, it's good to hear the background and uh, and what's driving uh, Rido and Scansonic. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Okay.